Hey guys, well, we're gonna get our teeth into a fairly chunky section of your chemistry syllabus, and that is organic chemistry. It's about 30% of all the marks that are available in the chemistry paper, and it's an awesome bit of chemistry because in fact, it's the chemistry that makes up us as organic organisms. So we're looking at chemistry centered mostly around uh, the carbon compounds, and there's many of them, um, so it's a very interesting type of chemistry. Now, getting to know your organic chemistry is a bit like getting to know the family. Now I'm talking about here a large family. So let's say, I don't know if you've ever been to um, a wedding or a big family party of sorts where you've got people from all around the place uh, coming to join you at this wedding. And there's people you didn't even know existed, cousins and aunties and uncles and grannies and grandpas, etc., etc. First thing at a big wedding like that is often just placing people. So the first step of organic chemistry is trying to place the different compounds. What type of compound are they? And each family of compounds, each little nuclear family we could say, is what we call a homologous series. They share common properties. For example, alkanes are carbon-carbon single bonds. That is their functional group. That is their distinctive quality. Alcohols have an OH, a hydroxyl group. So that distinctive feature um, is what makes the family what it is. So for example, your auntie who married the Maasai tribe uh, guy from Kenya, all her children are like six foot seven tall, like American basketball players. Um, or maybe the, you've got one particular family who have particularly large ears or something like that. Just some distinctive feature um, is that's what like the functional group is. Uh, for the sake of definitions, we say the functional group is the center of chemical activity. So just now we're going to go through all the different homologous series and functional groups so that you can get to know your way around. But that's really the first step, get to know who fits together. Second step, once you've been at this wedding for a little while, is you start to get to know people's names and you introduce to them. So naming is never easy. I'm sure you know that remembering people's names is not, not that straightforward. Um, but the wonderful thing about organic naming is we do have a system, the IUPAC system of naming, which once you understand how it works, it's fantastic because you can apply it systematically and you can barely make a mistake. But you've got to practice and you've got to be meticulous with that. We'll come back to that and do some examples just now. So that's the first couple of steps is getting to know who's who. Then imagine yourself sitting at the table and you start getting into some conversations and you get chatting to Auntie Margaret and well, she was born in Limpopo and she absolutely loves pup and chicken. And then you go and sit down next to Uncle Bob and he was born in, born in Durban and Durban they love bunny chow. And so you get to know some of the facts of the family, um, just different things. Now that's like the physical properties that we look at uh, where we learn about melting points, boiling points, how these um, elements will, will behave um, within themselves. Now, the last section that we will then have a look at is chemical properties, okay? And that's how they interact with one another. When you react to this one with that one, what does it produce and under what conditions and so on. These are less predictable and, and, and so you just have to get to know how these engagements actually go. It's a bit like a soap opera really, a bit like Isi Dingo, uh, where you don't know what's quite gonna happen, um, but once you've learned them, and you've learned the different conditions and the outcomes, etc. you will get to know your way around. So really the moral of the story, if you want to get to know the family, you have to spend time with the family. So answering as many questions as you can is by far the best way to get to know organic chemistry. Now we're going to kick off with these uh, bottom two layers here, which is structural organic chemistry, getting to know our homologous series and naming and so on. So I'm just going to quickly go through the table. Um, I'm sure you've got a table like this in your notes or you can pause and watch the video again. Um, but we've got nine different homologous series that we need to get to know. The first three uh, we call hydrocarbons. Those hydrocarbons are called that because they just have hydrogen and carbon. So just hydrogen, just carbon, there's no other additives. Um, then we've got Alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, that's alphabetical by the way, if you're wondering how to remember it, single, double, and triple bonds. Alrighty. Then our haloalkanes, we've got a halogen of some sort being added to an alkane, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Alcohols are going to have the distinctive OH group, the hydroxyl group. Moving on to the next part of it, they've got aldehydes and ketones. Those two are in fact um, very similar because they both have a carbonyl group, which is the C double bond O. 
only difference is where is it in the chain. If it's on the end of the chain, then it's going to be an aldehyde. And if it's in the middle of the chain, it's going to be a ketone. So we often say aldehyde on the side. The last two groups that you'll need to know, the last two series, uh, carboxylic acids and esters, also share the same functional group, that being a carboxyl group, which is a combination of the carbonyl, C double bond O, and the OH, which is hydroxyl. Carbonyl, hydroxyl, carboxyl. Okay, um, once again, on the end of the chain, um, it's, a, it's a carboxylic acid, and when it's in the middle of the chain, um, it's an ester. So we're going to go through a couple of naming examples shortly, but that gives you an overview of the families, and you can get to start to place who's who. Right, naming. I mentioned the IUPAC system of naming. IUPAC standing for the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. Now these guys are men in white suits who are just absolute geniuses and they've come up with this very clever way of systematically naming all of the compounds so that there's no confusion. They're like the kind of United Nations of chemistry. And uh, their system has helped us to be able to put into words and numbers any of these fancy compounds. So let's just go through a few examples. Um, question A. We've got three carbons in a row, that's prop and it's an alkane, so that is going to be propane. Now, there is going to be a longer video on this that you can watch with a bit more detail about how to do the naming, but I'm just going to run through these, these examples fairly quickly and make it, give, you, just give you a couple of comments along the way. Alrighty, um, second one, let's, let's go to C. I'm going to skip B and come back to it a bit later. C, one of the things we do when, we, when we're naming, we can identify uh, what homologous series it's from. I can see chlorines there, so it's going to be a haloalkane. Next thing is to, do, is to identify the longest carbon chain. So in this case, we've got one, two, three, four carbons. It's going to be but as a prefix, and it's going to be butane because it's an haloalkane. And then we've got to label our chlorines, these two chlorines here. So which side do we number from? Well, we want to keep the numbers as low as possible. So we're going to number from the right. So that'll be one, two, three, four, etc. So putting this whole thing together, remember we've got a butane and we've got two chloros, that's a dichloro, so it's going to be one comma two dichlorobutane. Okay, good one to practice. This, it's helpful by the way if you want to pause and try and name the next one, we're going to do D next and then, uh, and then I'll go through it with you. So once again, we identify what's going on. I can see a carbonyl group on the end. It's going to be an aldehyde. Okay, longest carbon chain. Next step, we've got one, two, three, four, five carbons. That's going to be a pent. So it's an aldehyde with a pent. Okay, so there's no other side chains or anything. So I'm just going to get straight into the name. It's pentanel. Pentanel. Alrighty. And do we have to number anything there? Do we have to make, call it one pentanol? Well, actually no, because if it, it, if it was on either end, it could be one. And if it was in the middle, it wouldn't be an aldehyde. It would be a ketone, it would be pentanone. Um, then we'd have to number it. Alrighty, let's have a look at the next one. We're going to go down to E now. Um, um, functional group, there it is in the middle. Um, it's a carboxyl group. We've got the C double bond O and the O, which means it's in the middle. It's an ester. We've got two sides to this carbon chain. We've got this up to the O, and then we're going to have a break, and then we go that on the other side. So we're going to name both of those, and it gives us kind of a double barrel name. Now, how do we know which is which and what is what? So take the O in the middle as kind of a separating point, and we're going to look at the two sides. The one that has the additional O, this one here, the double bond O, is the O8. The one with the O is the O8. Okay, that's a way of remembering it. And the other one is going to be the aisle. So this is the aisle, and this is the O8, or the no 8 So in this case, it's relatively easy. You can't make too much of a mistake because they've both got three. So um, the aisle is propyl, and the O8 is propanoate. So propyl propanoate is the name of that ester. Okay, now the, the one that we skipped and we'll come back to now, question B. 
Sure. Okay, so let's find the longest chain and let's identify what group. Well, it's got, it's got that triple bond there, so it's going to be an ine, an alkyne. The longest chain, well, we could go, that's, that's not long enough. There's definitely longer ones than that, so it's not that. Let's keep going. We could go all the way along the end, that, that's fairly obvious, and in fact, that would work or going up to the other one. They would both be the same length. That's six carbons. That's going to be hex. And because it's a triple bond, it's going to be hexine. Now, numbering, interesting one. If there was no triple bond, we'd, we'd start numbering from the left to keep it as low as possible. But because of the triple bond, we're going to have to treat that triple bond very specially. So we're going to number from the right-hand side to keep that number as low as possible. Okay. So looking at the overall name now, we've got the two methyl groups there. Um, so that's going to be a dimethyl on four and five, and then it's going to be hexine and hex two ine or two hexine, if you prefer, um, is the full name there. So let's put the whole thing together. We've got four comma five dimethyl. Hex to ein. Boom. Alrighty. So those are a few examples. Um, there's loads more to practice in your past papers. Um, get to be able to do that because that's going to be two or three marks uh, easily. And if they ask you one of those questions where they say use the structural formula, um, doing this in reverse, um, you could score six marks in one go. So get to know your IUPAC system of naming. Last thing I'm going to have a quick look at in this video is isomers. Now, what is an isomer? An isomer is something that has the same molecular formula, but a different structural formula. It's like the same ingredients, but just putting it together in a slightly different way. Okay, so um, what we've got here, a little example, is 1-bromobutane, okay, with a bromo on the end. Let's have a look at the ingredients. We've got one, two, three, four carbons. We've got nine hydrogens, and we've got a bromine. So that would be the molecular formula. Now, the structural formula would be putting that together in a different way. Let's see a couple of examples of how this could be done. So there we go. There's our uh, one bromobutane on the left-hand side. That's this one here that we started with. The second one has got bromine, but it's now on the second carbon. So that would be 2-bromobutane. The third example here is very interesting because actually we've, we've taken this methyl off from kind of the end of the chain and plugged it right in the middle there. But can you notice it's still got four carbons? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hydrogens and the bromine. So it's the same ingredients, just put together slightly differently. So that's how you work with isomers. Um, the three different types of isomers we've got are basically chain isomers, which is a different length main chain, for example, two and three. Uh, we've got the, the, the bromobutane and then the methyl propane. Uh, positional isomers like one and two, where we've got the same functional group, um, but in a different position on the chain. And then the last one, which is not represented here actually, is a functional isomer where we've actually got different functional groups. Now that would be, for example, an aldehyde and a ketone, propanol versus propanone. They both have the same ingredients, but a different structure. So I hope that's helpful, uh, just as an intro to structural organic chemistry. Once again, best way to, do, to get to know this well is to spend time with the family. So I'm gonna leave you to do some practice and some more practice and some more practice. Have fun, cheers.